Right there, mate. That was a good sounding target. I'm gonna have to pry him out of there. All right, Gary, try that. See what we got. Rick and Marty Lagina, known for keeping their TV show details under wraps, are facing a tough situation. The buzz for the new season turned tense when a leak unexpectedly spilled details about season 12. An insider revealed a new sponsor and additional resources that promised to take their explorations to new depths. What could possibly be so important that someone risked exposing it all this season? Join us to find out what's really going to happen in season 12. The leaked secrets of season 12 The main focus of the Laginus on Oak Island is the famous money pit, where they hope to find something valuable. They are working with Dumas Contracting Limited to dig even deeper. They've pushed the garden shaft down to almost 90 feet and used a special drill to go further to 95 feet. Finding metal traces deep underground has made them hopeful that a big discovery is near. As they keep digging, signs of a wooden structure below the tunnel have appeared, which has made Marty Lagina very excited. Even with past challenges, the team is set on expanding the garden shaft to connect with the tunnel, hoping to find something historically important. Laird Niven is also excited, believing that their hard work will pay off. Their main goal now is to dig the garden shaft deeper to reach the tunnel. Terry Matheson and Charles Barkhouse are keeping a close eye on Borehole H8, which is important to their theories about a chapel vault. They have found things like parchment and leather bookbinding here, which has made them think even more about the treasures that might be buried below. Marty stays enthusiastic with each find, whether it's pieces of wood that could be from a treasure chest or more common items. As they dig deeper into H8, the shadow of a large object at 170 feet keeps everyone guessing and excited about what it could be. The team's attempt to uncover an important discovery on Oak Island faces unexpected problems that push potential treasures deeper into the island. Terry Matheson revisits old dig sites and suggests that past efforts may have disturbed the location of a hidden vault. Freshwater tests and scans hint at valuable objects nearby, leading the team to plan a more focused dig. Rick Lagina notes that the movement of materials from Site H8 might indicate they are close to the chapel vault, boosting the team's spirits. Despite many challenges, their determination remains strong. The focus now shifts to the island's southeast wetland, where Gary Drayden, Jack Begley, and Billy Gerhardt start an extensive search near an old stone path. This path is thought to have historical significance and might be linked to early trade activities on the island. With many clues, this area soon becomes the main focus for the explorers. During their search, Gary Drayton suggests the stone path in the swamp might have been a docking point for ships. Its similarity to a path in Portugal and historical connections to the Knights Templar fuel speculation that it was used for unloading goods. As they dig into the muddy terrain, Alex Lagina is intrigued by the historical significance of the ancient road, while Gary, undeterred by the swamp smell, jokes it's the smell of treasure. But this isn't the most surprising part. Their investigation gets more interesting when they find a boulder oddly placed next to the stone path. This discovery pushes the team to keep going, with Billy Gerhardt noting a collection of rocks that look like steps leading to the boulder. This raises questions about its purposeful placement near both the stone path and the money pit. The team's focus sharpens, hoping their hard work will uncover something very valuable. Rick Lagina, fascinated by the unique stone arrangement and the large boulder, insists on continuing the dig. The strategic placement of the boulder seems intentional, sparking more curiosity about its importance. Located near both the money pit and the stone path, this site holds potential for more significant discoveries. Rick pushes for a closer look, believing the clues they've found are meant to guide them to something big. As they dig deeper, they find something surprising that hints there might be even more interesting things buried further down. Gary Drayton joins in, excited by a thick, uniquely shaped board found just two feet under the surface. He thinks it might be part of a ship because of its quality and material. The board is large, and there are no metal fasteners, 
which makes everyone wonder about its origin and how it was used in shipbuilding. The absence of metal puzzles Rick, who sees it as a reason to dig more. Marty Lagina is a bit frustrated with their work in the swamp, finding items that they can't quite understand. Still, he stays hopeful that they will eventually learn what these finds mean and how they fit into the island's history. Gary suggests that metal objects might be preserved in the marsh, sparking more curiosity about what might be hidden there. Later, Jack Begley talks about the difficulties of finding metal near the money pit, especially in Lot 5. They keep looking for metal because past visits hinted at possible discoveries. At the same time, an archaeology team examines a stone foundation found in a circular depression, trying to figure out its historical significance. Archaeologist Jamie Cuba, with years of experience, shares new ideas during the dig. He looks closely at an ancient stone structure that changes what we know about the site. This structure shows that many different cultures used this area over the years. The team finds various artifacts that tell a story of many cultures meeting here, a 14th century lead token, Venetian glass beads from the 1500s to the 1650s, and metal tools linked to historical figures. These finds suggest the area has a rich past. As the day goes on, Jamie sets clear goals to map the boundary of the foundation. His colleague Jack, full of curiosity, looks for new discoveries that could change historical views. Jeff, another important team member, explores the connection between the new foundation and the wider history of Oak Island. They find pieces of brick, ceramic, and glass, which add to the understanding of the site's history. Led by Jamie, the team works hard to document and study their finds, encouraging cooperation among experts to make the most of the site. This renewed energy pushes Jack and others to dig more eagerly, hoping to find key elements that might hint at hidden treasures. They aim to link these historical pieces into a broader story. But this wasn't the most surprising part. During their careful work, Jamie notices the soil is unusually compact, suggesting a binding material like mortar. This means there might be well-preserved structures or objects nearby, adding more excitement to their research. The team's combined efforts aim to put together the story of Oak Island's past, with each artifact offering a clue to the grand tale of human history written on this land. What else is hidden below? The team is ready to find out more about the island's past. Fresh discoveries reshape Oak Island's history this leads the team to gather around an interesting new find, similar to one they found in 2019 near H8. While they talk about this, archaeologist Fiona Steele reveals another surprising discovery, adding more excitement to their exploration. Laird Niven, reacting to the latest find near the stone foundation on the western side of Oak Island, suggests comparing the new sample with older ones to see if they match. This could help them understand how the site has changed over time. As the Oak Island team digs deeper into the money pit, their search for the rumored treasure vault below 180 feet keeps them busy. With each layer of soil, Marty Lagina and his crew's excitement grows, even though they haven't found the treasure yet. Their conversations often turn to past challenges, talking about them like old war stories, important yet frustrating. The mystery keeps them digging further and exploring more. But this wasn't the only surprise. Terry Matheson, always observant, spots a wood fragment just above the bedrock at a depth of 211 feet. At the same time, Alex Lagina finds an important piece of metal. Terry suggests the metal might be from a broken plug of the treasure vault, hinting at dramatic events in the past that might have shattered it during earlier digs. Marty likes this idea, imagining the plug breaking apart in all directions. This theory sparks their imaginations, even though it doesn't offer solid proof. The team then discusses whether to move the drilling rig to a new spot based on a theory that the vault has shifted positions. This flexibility seems designed to keep their digs going, no matter how often the current location doesn't yield anything valuable. Rick Lagina adds to the conversation by focusing on the depth and type of materials they find, which supports their shifting theories, often as changeable as the clay they dig through. As they get ready for the next day's work, Jack Begley prepares to sift through whatever they find next. 
his routine stays the same, despite the frequent lack of big discoveries. The advanced digging technology they use contrasts with the uncertain basis of their search. But this wasn't the end of their efforts. Elsewhere on the island, attention turns to a wood sample sent for carbon dating, taken from beneath the garden shaft. Alex Lagina makes sure to stay informed by calling Craig Tester, ensuring they keep getting new information. The excitement peaks when they find out that the wood dates from between 1631 and 1684. This discovery sparks enthusiasm and strategic talks about what it could mean. Despite this fascinating historical detail, it doesn't get them any closer to finding treasure. Instead, it pulls them deeper into historical theory. Craig Tester shares the carbon dating results, showing that the structure might be centuries old. This information adds more mystery but doesn't lead to any physical discoveries. It seems like the focus on telling an engaging story is becoming more important than finding actual treasure. This keeps both the team and the audience hooked, even as the chance that the treasure might just be a well-crafted tale grows. Rick Lagina thanks the Dumas team for their hard work, highlighting how much their contribution means. This shows a common theme in treasure hunting, the excitement and investment often lead to more exploration, even if they don't find anything concrete. As the episode ends, the team thinks about the significance of their findings, or the lack of them. It's like a play, with each member playing a role in a show that's part theater and part archaeological dig. The promise of, just one more hole, one more sample, one more test, keeps them coming back, season after season. They are digging into both the island and the layered story of historical intrigue and adventure that Oak Island represents. But this isn't the worst part. Despite not finding significant treasures, the Oak Island saga goes on, driven by hope, speculation, and the timeless human fascination with hidden treasures. The storyline mixes historical facts with modern treasure hunting, keeping viewers watching. Each episode builds on the narrative, encouraging viewers to stay tuned, driven by the same hope that keeps the diggers going, that the next dig, the next layer, might finally reveal something amazing. Yet, the treasure remains elusive, possibly showing that their quest is more about the journey than the end. New findings lead to an ancient tunnel, hinting at more layers to explore. Marty Lagina examines the newly found tunnel with great interest, noting it was likely built long before their work on Oak Island began. He is fascinated by the tunnel's age, feeling that such ancient craftsmanship adds depth to their story. His brother Rick sees this discovery as a crucial step in their long-standing project, especially since the tunnel is in an area rich in metal deposits. The team gathers, eager to explore what they now call the Garden Pit. Roger Fortin stresses the need to examine the tunnel's structure closely to understand its origins. Scott Barlow, perhaps a bit impatient, urges the team to speed up their efforts, feeling that they are close to a big breakthrough. Craig Tester, in a moment of triumph, encourages the team to keep digging, with Rick Lagina showing gratitude and giving the green light for more excavations. What will they find next? The team continues their search for hidden secrets as a new day begins. Unearthing secrets beneath the marshlands at dawn, contractors from Dumas return to the dig site, ready to go deeper, aiming for about 95 feet. At the same time, Billy Gerhardt, Jack Begley, and Gary Drayton were checking out an area near the southeast marsh, next to an old stone road. Gary went over their plan to inspect the rest of the tunnel, making sure everyone understood it. Two days earlier, they had found a man-made stone path leading to a big rock, which got them really excited. They were ready to explore what this path could mean. As they joked about their adventures, Gary felt positive about finding more interesting things. Meanwhile, Rick Lagina was thinking about the different structures they had found in the swamp. He wondered if they were linked to the famous money hole or if they were part of a bigger plan to change the land. During their search, they found wooden planks that fit together perfectly, clearly made on purpose. Jack thought these might be parts of an old ship, hinting at a significant historical event that happened in the swamp. As they continued, Billy Gerhardt found stones that seemed to form a ramp or another important structure buried under the swamp. 
Jack noticed a large boulder and compared it to others Fred Nolan found in 1981. Rick was intrigued by the boulder's pointed shape, thinking it might be connected to Nolan's cross, which some believe is a map or symbol. Their goal was to figure out if the boulder, the stone ramp, and the metal-rich areas near the money hole could lead them to hidden treasures. Rick was looking for a clear link that could explain their findings. He hoped that digging around the ramp and stone road might uncover artifacts that could explain the swamp's history. Gary Drayton stressed the importance of carefully cleaning and studying the structures they found. Billy Gerhardt pointed out how unique their discoveries were, hinting at a breakthrough in understanding the area's secrets. Driven to uncover more secrets, Rick encouraged the team to dig deeper and keep exploring. Later, a chat between Billy and Jack turned into a formal meeting at the Interpretive Center, where the team, armed with new clues, was eager to solve the island's mysteries. In this meeting, Rick, along with Alex Lagina, Jack, and Scott Barlow, met with archaeologist Laird Niven and archaeometallurgist Emma Colligan. They discussed a concrete-like material found in the stone foundation of Lot 5. Jamie brought a soil sample believed to be old mortar, possibly linked to the materials used in the money pit. Emma planned to use X-ray diffraction for analysis, hoping to connect current findings with historical building practices, despite some skepticism from outside experts. The money pit on Oak Island is famous for constantly revealing interesting finds that often lead to more questions. This week, another batch of discoveries was made. These new finds don't match the usual stories from the past but suggest that someone placed items in certain spots on purpose. Emma Colligan analyzed soil samples from Lot 5 and found they are the same as those from the money pit, even though they are 104 feet apart. This surprising link, discovered through X-ray tests, puzzles experts like Laird Niven and Scott Barlow. Niven believes someone moved the soil long ago with specific goals in mind. Alex Lagina notes that moving soil from one place to another would have taken a lot of effort, hinting that this might have been part of a well-planned operation. This connection sparks new discussions about what happened on the island in the past. Jack Begley and his team are curious about what secret slot 5 might reveal about past digs or hidden treasures. Meanwhile, Scott Barlow shares new information from wooden samples found in an underground passage from the 1600s, supporting theories about William Phipps' involvement. Phipps, a naval captain known for his adventures with the Conception, is thought to have hidden treasures on Oak Island, perhaps more to create a thrilling story than to record real history. As the team continues to dig along an ancient stone road, they find a large hand-forged chain and hook, along with a barrel stave. These items suggest the area might have been used as a docking site for ships, though this conveniently fits the island's tales of smuggling and secret activities. But then, a severe storm makes things harder by flooding the garden shaft with water, forcing the team to shift their focus from digging to dealing with the damage. After the storm, while trying to control the flooding, they discover an unexpected chamber next to the garden shaft. In the middle of this chaos, the team accidentally finds a small cavity 65 feet deep, hidden by timbers, while searching for the source of the water. Marty Lagina, who was once doubtful about the swamp's importance, now supports more explorations. The idea of multiple hidden chambers in the Money Pit area is now on the table, suggesting a complex network of man-made spaces designed to either guide or mislead treasure hunters. The team returns to what they call Aladdin's Cave, a large space 160 feet below the surface. Using high-definition cameras and sonar scanners, they explore the depths, finding the bottom covered by mud and silt that slopes sharply. Geologist Terry Matheson cautiously hints that the cavern might hold buried treasures, though this isn't confirmed yet, boosting the team's eagerness to keep digging. Could the discoveries on Oak Island be elaborately staged to enhance its legendary allure? What do you think? Like, comment, and subscribe for more deep dives into history's puzzles.